Hey guys, I'm Becky from Book Bite Reviews, and finally, welcome to another video. Now I feel like that's exactly how I started the last video, um, but I'm actually back this time. It's actually happening, I'm actually coming back. I still don't know how frequently. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot more frequent than last time though, but we're back. Part of the reason that it's been so long is that my computer where I do all my editing has pretty much taken a shit. It works, but it's extremely slow, it's extremely bogged down, and I have nothing on the computer, so I just feel like it's just at its lifetime. So I had to wait until I could get a new computer, um, I also wanted to upgrade my camera, so I'm hoping that this is much better quality. And yeah, now it's just, it's time. It's here. I'm ready. We're doing it. So we are going to come back with a reading vlog, which I am so excited about. I have been feeling the urge to record and talk to you guys for a while now. I've been wanting to talk about these different books that I'm reading, and now we finally can. So I guess we will talk about the books that I'm hoping to read this week. Um, I do have to leave like extremely soon because I have a surprise <laughs> doctor's appointment in order to get my prescription refilled. So that's fun. Um, it is prescription eye drops that I need so that my eyes do not burn and water throughout the day. And I honestly need to talk to them anyways about possibly changing it because it doesn't work as effectively as it should, but it's the only thing that's working for me. So I desperately need my eye drops. So now I have to go to this same day appointment extremely soon. So let's talk about the books and then I'll like really, really talk to you guys later. Oh, we should probably talk about some things that have changed since the last time I talked to you really quick. So um, as you can see, my hair is much different than the last time that I made a video. I have been growing it out. This is the first time that I have really, really enjoyed my long hair since like maybe middle school and I don't feel the urge to chop it off, which is kind of wild. So I do have a split dye. This side is red. This side is technically kind of like dark brown black, but it's blending really, really well with my natural. So I don't think I'll be dyeing this side as much. And then it's also split underneath. So this underneath is the dark underneath. This is the red. And then I do have, I don't know if you can tell. Let's see if I can bring it closer without messing this up. I do have a new nose piercing and a new septum. I'm really loving my 30s, I'll tell you that. So let's talk about the books I am hoping to read. So I am currently in the middle of one. I am 73%. And for some reason, this book is just taking me a very, very long time to read. And I'm not exactly sure why, but it's called Love Me Today by A.L. Jackson. I've really been wanting to read, I think it's book two in this series, but I'm somebody who can't just like jump into a series, even if it says that you don't have to read them in order, unless I really don't want to read that first book or however many books. But this one did sound interesting, so I am reading it. I am liking it, but just for some reason, it's just taken forever to read it. Then I would really like to read Fangirl Volume 4 by Rainbow Rowell. I believe, and I think, that this is the last volume of the manga edition of Fangirl, and I'm loving these. If you love this book and you don't necessarily want to reread it, I suggest doing it this way because it is faster, obviously, but it's a different way of reading it and still getting the same, like, I don't feel like there's a huge difference between this and the book. And so I'm loving it. And it's really making me want to read the book. Then I need to read The Darkness Within Us by Tricia Levenseller. This is, I think, like the fancy special edition that was sold like everywhere. Where it has like fancy edges and all that fun stuff. Yeah, very beautiful. Love it. This is following our main character from the first book's sister, who I hate. And I recently reread it to finally get to this book. Um, I meant to, re to read it like directly after, but then life got in the way. I just didn't get to it and I've been wanting to annotate it. So I reread the first one and fully annotated it. Love that experience. Want to do the same with this one. So it's been kind of put off until hopefully now. But the last time that we kind of like hear from her sister, I literally wrote on the page, I hate her and I hope she dies. And now I have to read from her point of view. But I did hear from my friend Anne that 
she ended up liking the sister more than our original main character, which I can't think of her name. And I felt that way with Akatar with Nesta. I did not like Nesta until we read Nesta's book, and now she's my favorite sister. Sorry, Elaine. I don't like you. Maybe you'll have a book and I'll like you. I hope she becomes a villain. I really do. Okay, I'm off topic. Off topic already. And the last book, which I know this is very lofty goals. Honestly, I could probably finish this book, read Darkness Within Us and Fangirl, but I'm hoping to also fit in, <laughs> possibly before Darkness Within Us, unfortunately. This book right here, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I know. I am not a Colleen Hoover girly. I've never claimed to be, wanted to be, etc. There's a lot of hype around her and the movie just came out. My best friend Sarah has been wanting to hate read it together. Hopefully hate read it together. <laughs> just to see like what all the hubbub is about. Um, I'm hoping that we don't turn into Colleen Hoover stands. I don't feel like we will. I feel like if anything it's going to be kind of like Ruby Dixon with Ice Planet Barbarians where it's like these aren't good books. These aren't critically acclaimed, award-winning, good books. You know, I, I hope you know by now how I feel about good books. I'm thinking that it might be like a Ruby Dixon where it's like, these are bad, but I can't stop reading them. I'd be fine with that. But I'm hoping she doesn't somehow convince me that abuse is okay. Because I feel like that's all I've heard about Colleen Hoover is that she doubles down on that, that everyone deserves love. So we'll find out. We'll see. I feel like there's like more I wanted to tell you and update you on, but honestly, I need to get to this appointment. I will see you guys later. I think I'm going to do some shopping after my doctor's appointment. So I will maybe get some B-roll of that and I will see you when I see you. guys I am back for my doctor's appointment. It took much longer <laughs> than I anticipated. I don't think I was seen until like 45 minutes to an hour after my appointment was scheduled for but that's okay. I got some good feedback because it wasn't my normal doctor who saw me so he gave me some suggestions that technically I can use it more often than it says but like within stipulations so I'm gonna be trying that out. I have also booked a appointment with an optometrist because I don't see somebody for like the health of my eyes just the vision of my eyes and then I also booked an appointment with a allergist to see like what is triggering this and things like that because this happens year-round 
so I'm not positive. I don't, I'm not even positive if it really is allergies, but that the allergy eye drops are working, so it must be, but I don't know. But um, when I did book the appointment, it was pretty cool because she asked if I wanted to just do like the environment or if I also wanted to test for food allergies. And I said that I would like to be tested for both just to see if I do have any things that, you know, maybe I should stay away from or anything. So that's going to be very interesting. I did take some B-roll of me at the bookstore because I did stop by there afterwards. And hopefully it turns out all right because I was definitely just like holding my phone sideways but just like in my hand kind of like down by my hip and then tried to like slyly like show you guys some books that looked interesting. So I did buy two books. The first one is The Girl I Used to Be by April Henry and I think I've read a book by this author. The name is very very familiar but I don't remember what book it was or if it was this book because the description of this sounds familiar but I don't think think I've read it. I don't think so. So it's about a girl who when she was three years old she was the only survivor of a horrific murder which was her mom and because her dad went missing the same day everyone's always assumed that her dad killed her mom and then took off but it turns out that he also was killed that day. So now they're trying to figure out the truth of what actually happened and it sounds like the actual killer might track her down because she's about to reveal the truth or something. The only thing and I didn't realize this till I got it home this is the stiffest the stiffest book like this is as far as it opens that I've ever encountered like these open just fine but like the book itself so weird. So I'm gonna need to like break this sucker in because I like a floppy book and I should have tested this but whatever. Then the other book which my local bookstore is called Another Another Look Books and they post up on their Instagram of like their displays and things like that and this was on there First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston and it's so funny because yesterday at book club uh, one of my friends, April, was telling me that she read this and it was really, really good. And April is like a really hard rater. Like if she gives something five stars, it's shocking. And she gave this five stars. And she said that we read a book by this author for book club. And I think it was called like 10 Blind Dates or something. It was like a girl who goes on 10 blind dates that she set up by her family during Christmas time. And I remember it being pretty good, but this is her first like adult thriller. So I don't really know anything about it. It's a book about a girl named Evie Porter, but the thing is that Evie Porter doesn't exist. So she must stay one step ahead of her past while making sure there's still a future in front of her. Stakes couldn't be higher, but then Evie has always liked a challenge. This isn't like necessarily something that I would naturally gravitate towards or choose for myself but April gave it five stars so I'm gonna try it out. I'm hoping to finish that ebook I was telling you. The one about time for love. What is it called? I can never remember the name of it. Love me today. Nothing to do with time. I mean technically the town is called like time farms or something but since I was at the doctor's office for so long I was able to read for 30 minutes and I'm now on page 306 of 369 pages so I'm 79% of the way through. I have less than 70 pages to go so it's going to happen. It's going to happen and tonight we're having tacos and I'm very very excited. Very excited. Oh I don't think I told you what day it was. I, for me when I'm watching reading vlogs I like kind of knowing what day it is and especially like the date just to know like you know when was this filmed and you know I don't know. I like that kind of thing. So um today it is Tuesday August 27th. Yep Tuesday August 27th. I'm trying to think of like what other plans I have for the week. I will obviously be working all week. I don't think anything exciting is too much in store. Oh, except for Thursday, which I need to remind my mother about. She is hosting karaoke at my library, so I need to remind her of that. Good thing we talked about this. And then I know this weekend um, I'll be getting my nails redone. Currently they look like this. I have like some cool cat eye effects going on. So I'll be getting my nails redone I think on Friday is the plan and I think I'm gonna do another cat eye but maybe like purple or something and on Sunday I have my little cousin's birthday party so I'm gonna be busy but I'm going to read I'm telling you I'm going 
to read. So I will check in with you guys once I finish this book, give you kind of like my overall thoughts. I should probably tell you what it's about. So when I finish it, I'll tell you what it's about and then what I thought about it. So I'll see you then. Hello! So, I have just finished my book. I read it on my phone. Where to begin? Okay, let's talk about what this book was even about. It is an alternating point of view and it alternates between Paisley, who is our main female character, and Caleb, who is our main male character. And for Caleb's chapters, his also alternates between the past and present day. Paisley has been hired by Caleb. He is one of her like childhood friends cousins who is from Seattle. He recently moved to town. Paisley has also recently come back to town after a bad breakup. Her friend like tells his cousin about her because his daughter wants to learn how to take care of and ride her new horse and Paisley is a horse trainer so he convinces his cousin to hire Paisley and so like it starts off with Paisley being late to the interview slash like first day of her working for him and she's leaving the grocery store and she backs into somebody and ends up being Caleb and they don't know it's each other at first and he's like super mean to her like it was obviously like a mutual fault accident because they both backed into each other they were like it was like Paisley a car and then him and he was backing this way and she was backing this way. So they both backed into each other. But he kind of like goes off on her. But she's also like, the guy was a jerk. But he's also like super hot. And then she finally makes it to the interview slash first day. And they find out that they are each other. So like you end up finding out that Caleb's daughter isn't really his daughter. It is his niece. And that his sister was brutally murdered along with two other people that are connected to him. So he has some sort of enemy. So like Caleb's whole storyline is that he's looking for this person. He's trying to keep, he's moved back to town to try to keep his niece safe. And it's only been like a year since like all these murders happened. And so he's like trying to track down what enemy he created that has caused all this destruction. And then Paisley's storyline is that, you know, she has this like really bad breakup that she's coming off of. And she has this really awesome job where she's hoping to save up so that she can start her own horse training business again. But she's also kind of like falling for her employer and also this really, really sweet kid of his. I think 
my rating is technically going to be like a 3.75, but I'm going to put it as a four on all the sites that don't let you put 3.75. And I think that it was because I wasn't really in the mood for this like romantic suspense. I just kind of wanted it to be a romance. I kind of wanted it to just be maybe his sister passed away in some sort of like normal kind of tragedy and he's taken his niece in and he's kind of like this gruff guy who maybe has this troubled past and they kind of like work through that and be together. I normally like romantic suspenses, but I definitely wasn't like expecting it going in. And I don't know, it just seemed like a bit slow, to be totally honest. Like you would think that it would be pretty fast paced. And on top of that, I don't love it when a woman has to kind of like grovel for a man to love her. Because like the whole time he's like, you don't want this with me. I can't love anyone. I'm incapable of love. I'm not this nice guy you think I am. You know, you're, you're not going to change me or redeem me and stuff like that. And so like it's a lot of times of like her putting him before herself and also just being like, you know, it's okay that he can't tell me he loves me because I love him. And I don't love that. So I think it's going to get a 3.75 slash 4 star. Even though I did like the way that it ended, the last, how many pages did I say I had left? Like 64. The last 64 pages were like very, very fast paced very action-packed and I kind of wish more of that was sprinkled in to the rest of the book. So it's like 60% of the book was kind of like him just claiming that he needs to find this person before they find his niece but you don't really feel like the anxiety or the time sensitiveness of him finding this person because you're like the niece is safe. Then like that last 40% like you then like he then starts to taunt Caleb Caleb realizes this person knows where he is possibly and you do start to like start to kind of feel that panic. But yeah, I just kind of wish like more of that was kind of sprinkled in. Maybe more like taunting notes or just him getting a weird vibe or Paisley getting a weird vibe or, you know, just anything to kind of like build this up. What am I picking up next? Ooh, I don't really know. But once I find out, I will let you know. Hi. It is technically Thursday morning, but it's Wednesday night. <laughs> it's, um, what time is it? It is one o'clock in the morning. It's been a day. It's been a whole day. <laughs> I have been so annoyed. So last night after I talked to you guys, I got in bed. So I decided to get in bed with Fangirl, volume four by Rainbow Rowell and Gabby Nam. I got, God, probably like maybe here left. Like I read all of this and I only had like this much left. And then my power started going in and out because it stormed last night. So then it like went out, stayed out. Like I'm sure the storm's gonna pass and then my power will be back. But instead it stayed out completely until about I think six o'clock. <laughs> so it was out from 2.30 to 6 a.m. Or 6 p.m. Sorry, 2.30 to 6 p.m. A good chunk of the things in my fridge I need to throw away. Even though yesterday I went to Meyer and I bought pretty much nothing but perishables. So that's super cool. That's awesome. I love that for me. I also like did not sleep well because I kept freaking out that I was going to miss my alarm, which I had to then set on my phone because I was on my phone all day reading with you guys. It was at 30% before I went to bed and I woke up, it was at 15. So I had a pretty awful day, but it's back now. I am in the same pajamas that you saw last night. Get off my back. I love these pajamas. <laughs> Yeah, I only wore them for a couple hours, so I'm rewearing them. They are these super cute Halloween pajamas at Target. I saw them on TikTok that was like, you know, Halloween pajamas at Walmart. And it was like, uh, I think there's like five or six pairs total. This was like the one that I was like, I want these. I just like happened to be in Walmart with my friend Sarah and they were there. And I was like, oh my God, I, I have to buy these. I have to buy these. And so we ended up getting a matching pair and I'm really excited about it. So. I am re-wearing them again. But like I was telling you, started Fangirl, almost finished it. Found a book light that had a charge, finished it. So we have another book down of the four, two out of four are done that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. I don't think I'm really gonna get into like what it's about because it is the last part 
of a four-part series of a book and you've probably heard of Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. If not, you can look it up, but it is like a contemporary romance coming of age, freshman in college sort of story. It like goes into the story and then it's broken up by chapters of the fan fiction that her and her sister write, which is called Carry On which I'm sure you know I love and I'm obsessed with, became a thing from this book. Like it was a, a fan fiction, which is like kind of like This World's Harry Potter, a fan fiction of that. But basically Simon and Baz, who are basically Harry Potter and Draco, are gay. In this world, like it's pretty close to Harry Potter, but in her fanfic, they are gay for each other. So then this book was such a hit and everybody wanted to read Carry On, the fanfic written in this book. So that is a book inside of a book, which is amazing. And I love it. But all of the volumes so far, I've given five stars. But this volume, I think I'm going to give four stars to because while I, I loved it, um, it felt very true to the book. I don't fully remember how Fangirl ended, but the way that this ends, it feels kind of abrupt. It feels kind of like there should be more pages. Is there another volume? But no, like in the author's note at the end, like it does state like, you know, fourth and final. It says like on this page, status complete, currently reading four out of four. But I don't remember the book ending so abruptly and kind of just like the end. Like I, it felt a bit more wrapped up and this kind of feels a little bit loose. I'm going to give it four stars, even though the book itself I loved gave five stars. It really makes me want to reread Fangirl now to find out if this is how it ended. And it always has made me want to reread Fangirl. So that might be happening eventually. When? <laughs> Don't ask me, but eventually. So that means that I have two books left that I'm trying to read, which is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover and The Darkness Within Us. I am going to pick up right now with my little earbuds to It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. Right now I'm feeling like I don't want to read this, but I'm buddy reading it. And we agreed today that we would start it today. So I'm going to put in my earbuds and listen to it. I also do want to say very quickly before I go and start this book, my husband told me yesterday that he told his friends about this channel and about how I am getting back into it. And like if they wanted to help support me to subscribe and, you know, to like tell their partners, you know, if they're readers to come my way. Um, while I appreciate tremendously <laughs> the support, tremendously, um, I have a very supportive husband. I love it. But also, uh -huh, I'm still like, you know, kind of embarrassed that I do this a little bit. I love it. And I tell people about it. But I'm like, you know, when they ask, you know, about stuff, I'm just like, well, uh -huh, you know, I have a YouTube channel. It's still just like kind of weird. You know, it's, it's awkward. You're putting yourself out there. And you're like, I'm talking to strangers. And then it's like, I'm talking to people I know. And sometimes it's really cool. Like the people I do know who are watching this, like probably Anne. Hi, Anne. It is still like kind of, it's flattering. Like when she comes up to me and she's like, oh, I watched your video and I love that you, you know, you did this or, you know, that I saw the cats or whatever. Um, it's awesome. Don't stop. But it is still kind of like, oh, that makes me a little embarrassed. <laughs> um, yeah, my husband told people to follow me. And if you know my husband and you're here, um, hi, Hello. Feel free to look away. Uh, feel free to just blindly support me. But if you do know my husband, you're watching and you're like, yeah, this is great. She's making me want to read or I just like watching these videos. Thanks. I guess keep doing it. Just maybe don't tell me about it. I keep like ending this and then be like, but also another thing. I'm leaving, but I'm not, but I'm leaving, but I'm not. I did yesterday start to kind of plan out videos. I know who am I making future plans it's real and so far my plan is to like kind of do like a video a week and I think for like September October it's pretty much like every week there's gonna be a video but then I think like November maybe December I think it's like a little bit slower so like you know I've got plans those plans could change but I am making plans and I have like some cool fun ideas there's some different times I definitely want to vlog um, I will give you a sneak peek that if you have been around for a while you might have heard of the Bee Bat or the Book bite a which is a week-long readathon during the week of my blog anniversary, or I guess vlog anniversary. You might have heard of it. It's gonna happen this year. October will be a little bit more nuts, but you know, that's that's my season, that's my time. I'm here for it, I'm loving it. If you do have any ideas for videos that you do want to see, let me know in the comments. I do know that this weekend, I would like to try out this face mask that I bought with you guys. Okay, I'm actually now <laughs> going to leave. See you tomorrow.
Um, I am at work. I wanted to quickly update you because <laughs> I need to like kind of get some thoughts out really quick about it ends with us. So I'm almost at the 50% mark. I think I'm like four hours into the audiobook. And I have to say, number one, her name is so stupid. Her name is Lily Blossom Bloom. Seriously. Ryle, another dumb name. So far, I don't like either one of them. I think they are both weird. I am like slightly enjoying the scenes from the past when she's talking about her ex, whose name is like something with an A. I can't even think what it is. Another weird name. I don't know why we're getting like so strange with the names. Um, and so far, I think like the only character that I'm liking is her coworker slash Ryle's sister. She's like the only one who seems kind of normal and fine. Um, the Ellen letters are dumb. It's a dumb concept. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not enjoying myself. And everything with Ryle is like so weird. She's just gonna get her heart broken because he's already told her he doesn't want a long-term relationship. He just wants to have sex with her. And I feel like she's just a conquest to him because she's like, I don't do one night stands. So it doesn't totally make sense to me. I'm not loving it, but I am gonna keep reading. I am gonna finish it. Sorry, this person's like parking in front of me and they almost hit my coworker's car. Like, what on earth are you doing right now? Anyways, I'm gonna go to work um, and I will update you either later tonight or tomorrow. Hello. It is Friday night. It is almost Saturday morning. It's 11.42 p.m. <laughs> um, I haven't read any more since I last updated you in my car before work. I think that was yesterday morning. But I am going to listen to some tonight while I fool around on my computer. But really quickly, I wanted to do my face mask with you guys because I want to. <laughs> so I have my headband in to hold back my bangs. I did not intentionally match my outfit to it. It's just a coincidence because green is my favorite color. In order to put on this mask, I'm going to be using this DeWizen, I think is how you say it, mirror that my mom gave to me. That's the brand. It has a main mirror, a side mirror, and then over here is a two times and a three times, and I haven't taken the stickers off. It lights up. Here is the mask itself. This is the Elf Skin Super Revitalized Magnetic Mask with Revitalizing Carrot Seed Oil. This is what it looks like. This is the mask itself. This is the tool. So on this side is where you scoop it and put it on your skin. And then this side um, is the magnetic end, which as you can see, a little disappointing. It did come cracked in shipping and it's exactly where like the box is slightly smashed in. Oh. It smells earthy. I've cleaned my face and now I'm going to, I guess, do this. Oh yeah, this is like thick. It's going on like really nicely though. One thing it didn't say though is like, am I putting a thin layer, a thick layer? Okay, it's done. 
certainly not the prettiest mask I've ever put on. But right now it's kind of feeling like tingly. It feels a little weird to be perfectly honest because it's almost like a warm tingling sensation. I'm gonna leave this on until it dries and then we'll check in. In the meantime, I'm going to listen to this terrible audiobook. <laughs> All right, it is time to take this off. Um, I just did a like test patch because it still looks pretty wet. It totally worked. So I'm gonna try to zoom you in so that you can see. It feels so weird coming off. You can feel it like clinging off of your skin. Let's show you the magic, I guess. Isn't that so weird? Like, that's insane. So I guess I'll just keep going. <laughs> Okay, so here is all of the mask that came off. And then here is my face, which like, there's hardly any residue. And I'm sure if this wasn't like caked, I would be able to get more of this off. I wonder what happens when I move this. Can I even move it? No, not really. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go wash this residue off my face and then we will put on some lotion and do a little bit of talking. Be right back. Okay, so I have washed it all off. My skin feels so good. It feels so soft. Like, it's honestly kind of crazy. Like how good my skin feels right now. I really like this mask. So, so far, first impressions are like, this is great. I will say, so I just used water to get the rest of it off because there was just small little specks. It was pretty easy to get off. What was crazy when I took off the protector sleeve that had the mask clinging to it, it turns immediately back into the original mask. So it's not ever going to be dry it seems, or if it does dry, I don't know if it's going to lift properly. But when I wiped my face with my towel, there was definitely some sort of residue all over my face it had slightly a black tint to it. So yeah, I know that it's like, what was it infused with? Like carrot seed oil or something? Yeah, carrot seed oil, vitamin C, vitamin E, and argan oil. So I guess I could have patted it dry, but it still feels like very, very nice. So I'm going to put on my night cream, which is the Elf Skin Holy Hydration Nourishing Night Cream with jojoba, aloe, and shea butter. And while I do this, I guess I'll talk to you guys. Um, so I did go get my nails done today with my mom. Here they are. They are another like cat eye, almost like space galaxy kind of color. I really like them. I have been listening to It Ends With Us while I was waiting for this to dry or be ready to magnetize off. And something very interesting just happened. It's Oh, I forgot his name already. I don't know, the guy from her past. She goes to a restaurant with Ryle and her mother and the waiter is her ex from when she was in high school. And that's very interesting. That's very interesting. So I almost feel like, um, is there gonna be like a who should I be with situation or, I don't know. I really don't know. But uh, I can't tell you, it's not getting any better. <laughs> So far, I do not understand the hype. I don't like the writing style. I don't like the characters. I don't like their names. Yeah, like there's nothing good about this book. Like I am, I'm interested in where it's going, but it feels more like a morbid curiosity instead of like genuine curiosity, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So I'm like looking in my three times mirror to see if I can see any sort of like difference in my skin from using that mask. And to be honest, it doesn't really look like it sucked a whole lot of my pores, like my blackheads and stuff. Is there anything else to update you guys on? So I did realize that tomorrow, it's 
past midnight. It's 1241 now. But Saturday is the last day of the month and I was trying... My goal every month is to read 10 books and once I finish this one I will only be at nine. Well technically I'm at eight because one was a DNF. But I did realize that it is Labor Day weekend so I have an extended weekend, so I might prolong this reading vlog until next Tuesday. So it will be like a full week's worth because I work from home on Tuesdays, like I mentioned. I'm like technically off work, like I work from home Tuesday, but I'm off. I don't go in the building until Wednesday. So that's like a lot of opportunities to read, a lot of opportunities to chat. I think that's the plan for when to end this vlog this this welcome back vlog but okay i will see you guys tomorrow happy saturday night i am coming to you with a reading update which is that i finished it ends with us so let's just get the overall rating out of the way i'm giving this book 2.25 stars it overall sucked hardcore <laughs> i will say that i'm very pleased with the ending I'm very pleasantly surprised by the ending with how much like bad crap I've heard about Colleen Hoover. Yeah, it was very interesting. I feel like I need to like re-look into why Colleen Hoover is a bad person because this book kind of like, I feel like disproves everything that people have said about her in the past. That like, you know, she tries to show that toxic relationships are okay, that she kind of doubles down when people bring it up, um, or just like everyone deserves love you know, because I feel like this book kind of just proves that. And then in the author note, she talks about how her mother was a victim of domestic abuse. And I think maybe her sister or her grandmother. I don't know. I mean, the book still isn't well written. The character names are dumb. I will say like, it definitely had me going that it was going to be kind of like pro stay with your abusive partner. Um, it was pretty tricky. And I'm almost wondering if the people who are saying that she is pro, not pro domestic violence, but I guess pro everyone deserves love or there's no such thing as bad people. I feel like they didn't finish the book. I feel like they got to the part where she repeatedly forgives him and maybe because she makes comments like people aren't bad people, they just do bad things. Like I kind of get forgiving somebody for one time. The second time, the only reason I understand is because then we kind of learn about his background. Not to victim blame here at all because it was something interesting that they bring up in the book. Lily's father was abusive to her mother and so she talks about how like she really judged her mom more than she judged her dad. Like she didn't like that her dad was doing it but she definitely judged her mom harshly for sticking around, not calling the cops, making up excuses. And then when it happened to her she was like, I completely understand because it's so hard to not stay with the person that you love. Because at the same time like she is completely in love with him and like when the times are good they're great but when the bad times are bad they're the worst and she does like say a line about how a few minutes of him at his worst can destroy years of him at his best and I thought that was really interesting just to bring that up of like it's not the victim's fault should they leave absolutely is the st statistic like 85 percent of women return to their abuser Yes. But at the same time, it's like, why aren't we holding the men more accountable for their actions? Why aren't we saying, of course she should stay with you, she loves you, but you should be changing or you should not want her to be with you, you know? So I did like those mentions, but like overall the book is just badly written. It's not that great, but I am like definitely very happy with way, the way it ended because I really thought for a second that it was going to end very, very badly. Because I don't necessarily, I guess, want to spoil this for you, but at the same time, like, don't read this book. Oh, I do want to mention if you are considering um, reading it. By the way, this is my stylus pen. So this is what I'm, like, waving around and stuff. I will say there are definite trigger warnings for domestic abuse, sexual assault, child abuse, child abandonment. I think that's about it. And for pretty much all those things, it's, like, in detail and occurring on page. So you know, just know that going in. I'm not sure what I'm going to read next. I mean, I feel like it's definitely the darkness within us, but at the same time, September 1st is in about 40 minutes and I have the magical readathon that G from Book Roast puts on for her world that she created called Aurelium. Or Aurelium's a school. The world is called Eldia. So I do have like specific reading prompts and things to read for that. So I might 
might look and see if that book will count towards that. Otherwise, like, I really need to get my eight books for my required reading done first. Also, look at how cute this pumpkin is. It's a little trinket tray, and I'm gonna use it for my camera batteries. But how cute is he? And this was only, I think, $5, but it was at Target, and I had to have it. It's so cute, and it sits on my little monitor stand. I love it. Okay, I think that that's everything to update you on. I will talk to you once I start something. Hey guys, happy Tuesday, and it is time to close out this vlog. Now, it's been a few days since I've updated you. I know. <laughs> But um, life kind of got away from me here towards the end. And I have been editing the footage so far. I still have a couple clips that I need to edit down. But right now the vlog is sitting over an hour. So it's kind of good that we kind of skipped out on some things, to be totally fair. So just to kind of like recap um, what's been going on when I haven't been updating. On Sunday I had my little cousin's birthday like I told you about when we started the vlog. On Monday I decided to take the day to just kind of like laze around, sleep as late as I want to, clean up around the house a little bit. Um, did I do anything else? Oh, I did go on a walk all by myself. I really want to get into walking and I know like on one hand now is a perfect time because it's gonna get cooler outside but also winter's coming and I'm gonna try to like even take walks in the winter, which I'm going to sign up for a rec center membership. So I can always just go and walk there. Yeah, I went on my first walk and it was really fun. I am planning on going on another walk as soon as I finish this. And that's like who I'm trying to be right now. I'm trying to be somebody who's walking. I don't think I'm ever gonna become like a runner or anything. I just want to walk, get a little healthier get some movement in my life. And then since I was on that walk, I did start an audiobook. I started Somewhere Beyond the Sea by TJ Klune. Now this technically comes out next Tuesday, but I did get an advanced listener copy from Libro FM. So I decided to start that on my walk and it is so freaking good so far. I am definitely going to be giving it five out of five stars. I am just loving it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be vlogging this week. I can't remember if I am. But if the next vlog that you see, which should be in a couple weeks, doesn't talk about this book, then be sure to follow me on Goodreads because that's where I post all of my other reviews that I don't talk about here in these videos. So far, I think I'm like either just under or at 50% and it is so, 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 so good. I have already cried like once or twice. I have been like, oh my God, that's so cute a bunch of times. And it's definitely made me like laugh out loud a bunch. So I'm definitely going to be continuing on with that. I'm so, so, so excited about this month. I have some really, really good books planned. I have a bunch of advanced reader copies of some books that I'm really excited about. And I'm just like, I'm ready to read. Sorry about that. Battery just died without warning. I don't recall saying anything. I'm gonna go take a walk, eat dinner, shower, and then tomorrow I go back to work in the building. But alas, it's time to end this vlog. Did we do all the things we set out to do? Not exactly, but honestly, I'm pretty happy with it. I have been reading and I've been doing things and I'm proud of that and I'm so happy to be back with you guys. I'm ready, I've got a new camera, I've got a new computer system that luckily my husband knows how to like upgrade computers. So when my mom gave this to me, we were able to like buy new parts to upgrade it so that it would be able to edit on it. And he has like all these grand plans for me for the future to update like the power source and yada yada. So I'm excited because I've already started editing and it's running so, so smoothly. And I'm just so excited about it. <laughs> So I will see you guys in my next video. The next one you will see after this is going to be like a sit down video. But again, let me know in the comments if there's anything that you want to see because I would love to film it for you. Don't forget if you like this video to give it a thumbs up. Stay safe, keep reading, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye! <laughs>